I am here today to deliver a talk on management of hydroadenitis separativa. I can say I am here to learn about defeating the enemy called hydroadenitis separativa. How do we manage it? Let's hear. We often hear that we are next to God. But which God? On research, I found that Dhanvantri is the Hindu god of medicine and is an avatar of Lord Mahavishnu. But believe me, friends, if we want to destroy the enemy or the disease called hydroadenitis separativa, one has to open the third eye of Shiva. If we want to defeat this disease or this enemy called HS, we have to know who are its friends, in a way, who are our enemies. The enemies are lifestyle, irritants, genes, occlusion, hormones, immunity, and infection. So we have to take care of all of them one by one. To win any war, it is important to know what are the strengths of the uh, enemy and we have to know that how are they placed and technically I can say we should know how to stage the diseases. Now areas may differ but criteria remain same. In stage 1 there are localized signal or multiple abscesses with no sinus tracts and scars. In stage 2 there are recurrent abscesses, sinus tracts and scars. Single or multiple lesion may be widely separated and in stage 3 there is a diffuse involvement of affected area with multiple interconnected tracts and abscesses across the whole area. So we must know before fighting this disease that how to stay. It is not only the staging of the disease, we should also know who are the other common friends of the disease. That means we should know that what are the metabolic syndromes associated like diabetes, depression, anxiety, polycystic ovary or tobacco abuse. We should do a thorough physical examination and review all the systems. We should look into the psyche of a person, is he depressed or not? Because many a times the drugs taken for uh, depression can also cause it. Inflammatory bowel disease is there or not? Is there any arthropathy or there are any auto-inflammatory syndromes associated? We must look into all. Once we are sure of the scenario, then we can start treating the disease in a step ladder fashion uh, or we call it algorithm. In 2016, an algorithm with respect to all the aspects of tre treatment were uh, proposed uh, in grade methodology. And what is more important is the need for surgical intervention should be assessed in all the patients depending on the type and extent of the scarring. We will go on further to learn about all this. I come across a patient of HS, the first and foremost thing I think about is to change his lifestyle. And what in lifestyle, if the person is obese, I must say that he should reduce his weight drastically, he should switch over to a healthy meal plan. If he's a smoker, he has to stop that. And if he can change his lifestyle and can do all these things to overcome the metabolic syndromes associated, I'm sure half the battle is fought. Bleed the war. We have to have a comprehensive team approach and the team should have surgeons, laser specialists and a physician. Now all of them can be three in one and what I do usually is in a step letter fashion I start with the medicines and perform surgical maneuvers if needed. If I don't do then I can switch over, send over to the surgeon and advocate lifestyle changes and once things are under control I advise laser. Always I start with antibiotics as per the culture sensitivity or I use clindamycin, moxifloxacin, tetracyclines, retinoids and rifampicin and sometimes a low dose steroids. Steroid pulses along with local suitable antibiotics are good. I usually use metrogel plus clindamycin locally or mupirocin or fusidin. Even intralegional steroid as time are helpful. We can also use 15% resorcinol and zinc gluconate dressings with KMNO4 washes. A local excision is always good. 
In suitable female patients, we can think of oral contraceptives, ciprotran acetate, spironolactone, finasteride, and metformin. If these things don't work, then we think of biologics, which will come in detail later on. Wider surgical excision can be thought of, and lifestyle changes again. Talking about, talking about biologicals, adalimumab and infliximab are recommended for moderate to severe disease. Adalimumab should be considered at a dose approved for HS. That is 160 mg STAT followed by 80 mg after 2 weeks and then 40 mg every week for maybe 6 months or till the uh, overcoming of the disease. Infliximab doses is 5 mg per kilogram at week 0, 2 and 6 and then every 2 months thereafter for 12 weeks. This is recommended only after failure of adalimumab in patients with moderate to severe HS. The agents that may be also effective include Ankirina 100 mg daily and Ustekinumab 45 to 90 mg every 12 weeks. Etanercept use is not supported and has a very limited available evidence and please do not forget to differentiate between the originals and biosimilars. Of course, don't forget to do the whole, all uh, pre-biologics checkup and tests uh, if you want to give any biologics. I forgot to tell, tell earlier. And uh, role of immunosuppressants, methotrexate and azathioprine are not recommended at all. A combination of colchicine and minocycline can be considered for refractory mild to moderate disease. We should avoid colchicine monotherapy. And in patients with recalcitrant moderate to severe disease, we can also consider cyclos. In. in acute flares or as a bridge to other treatments, short-term pulse steroid therapy can be considered. In case of severe disease, consider using long-term corticosteroids tapered to the lowest dose as adjunctive therapy when the response to standard therapy has been suboptimal. Along with the medicine, many a times we have to uh, use the surgical procedures and various procedures are cryoencephalation, incision and drainage, de-roofing or steep that is skin tissue saving excision with electrosurgical peeling. What is it? Will come a little later, white surgical excision. Now talking about cryoencephalation, after giving local anesthesia with a 20 gauge needle which is mounted onto a cryosurgical unit is inserted in opening of the sinus tract, liquid nitrogen is sprayed for 5 seconds and a 3 second pause, the process is repeated 3 times and treatment sessions are given every month until the tract is obliterated. This was first described in 2014. Incision and drainage remains one all-time favorite for me. It gives pain relief and uh, fluctuating uh, acute abscesses can be tackled. It has a uh, definite uh, minus point of a short-term effect and it has a tendency to relapse. The other surgical procedure is de-roofing in which after local anesthesia, a blunt probe identifies the sinus openings. Different angles in search of connecting fistulas are looked into and wherever there is no resistance, we avoid the false track. Probe acts as a guide. Sinus roof is removed. Margins probed again. Jelly-like material on the floor removed superficially and healing occurs by secondary. Skin tissue saving excision and electrosurgical peeling or steep was described by Block et al. In which it is done under general anesthesia. We palpate and probe the sinus tract. Sinus roofs are incised electrosurgically and successive tangential excisions are made until the epithelized floor of the sinus tract is reached and it is continued until the area is clear of lesional tissue and fibrosis. Edges are checked and healing occurs by again second by secondary intention. This slide is courtesy Dr. G. S. Dhami and his team from uh, Chandigarh Medical College and you can see the results in a Hurley 2 stage 2 uh, patient 
who was 46 year old. And always resort to local or wide excision as well. At times we do a radical excision also in which a little margin of 1 centimeter should be left. Sometimes axillary vault excision is also done along with the radical excision. Whenever primary closure or skin flaps are not feasible, then we switch over to skin grafts, which can be split thickness skin graft or full thickness skin graft or recycled skin graft. I am not very confident with these flap techniques and uh, many surgical things uh, have been uh, described in the textbooks. You can go and see the freestyle flaps, various flaps are there. I am not very confident about it, so I am not going to take more time on that. Those who are good at surgery uh, can have a simultaneous use of multiple closure techniques and diminish the wound surface area, accelerate the wound healing, but not my cup of tea. Some people resort to star-like technique in which five equilateral triangles are excised in addition to the central foci. Edges of each triangle are uh, then sutured again and final scar is considerably small. It's a good technique. Beyond the systemic medicines and surgery, we also have light and laser and energy sources. NDEAC laser is recommended. Lower quality, some people are now using uh, newer lasers also. Uh, lower quality evidence suggests other wavelengths that are used for follicular destruction. In patients with Hurley stage 2 or 3 with fibrous uh, sinus tracts, carbon dioxide laser is recommended and photodynamic therapy and external beam radiation have limited role, remember that. Again, as I am not a laser expert, more laser experts in the core group can explain further about these. Like always, we have some special group of patients also like pediatric and pregnant patients. For pediatric patients with HS, a laboratory evolution of precocious probability should be performed especially in those aged 11 years or younger. <laughs> Avoid tetracyclines in children younger than 9 years. Avoid administration of acetate to female patients during the childbearing areas. Avoid hormonal agents, retinoids and immunosuppressive medicines and most systemic antibiotics in pregnancy. In pregnancy, it is better to uh, stick to the topical treatment. To conclude, successful treatment of uh, HS is prevention of new lesions, minimization of inflammatory component of the disease, eradication of chronic sinuses and limitation of scar formation. The method used to manage HS have included behavioral and dietary changes, topical and systemic medications and surgical uh, interventions followed by lasers if needed. Patient education and psychological support are important comp components of the patient management. We should avoid skin trauma, the institution of careful skin hygiene, smoking cessation, dietary restrictions of dairy and food with high glycemic loads, weight reductions are commonly recommended and formal studies not evaluated the impact of these interventions of course, but they are important to my mind. And thankful to DMCH uh, Chandigarh, Dr. Thami, Dr. Monica Kuchraria and their team for providing me the inputs into the surgical modalities of tackling the disease. I am thankful to Open House team, 
especially Dr. Akshay Jain and Geraldine uh, Jain. Uh, I am also thankful to the listeners who spared time to listen to it. And uh, any questions is uh, answerable by anybody. I may not know all. Thank you so much for patient listening. Finally, to end the talk, I wish all of you a success against the war and defeat the enemy called HS. Thank you so much again.